both be lost. Join the conference, it's gonna be lit. You're a pop fan, you don't wanna miss it. In this digital age, we got them online. No need to travel, no waiting in line. From the comfort of home, our passion tastes like. Bring me the bodies, but our heart bars are right. Can't attend live, don't let it dismay. Place on the way, just a click, no delay. Here we come, the future's our song. We're out in TG. Hey, Curiosity Champions, welcome back to our second session of day two. You made it, I think. Uh, Heather might still be going over there. You know, she's got a bunch of math, math tips. Um, boy, are you guys in for a treat. Um, I'm your host, Amanda Fox, and Community Manager of CurePod. Today, we're diving even deeper into the wonders of education and tech, and we've got something seriously cool lined up. Now you know our mission, blending the magic of education with the wonders of technology. We're all about sparking innovative ideas and creating transformative learning. And in this session, we're going to take it up a notch. Get ready to have your minds blown by none other than the incredible Dan Fitzpatrick. He's here to talk about the mind-boggling world of generative AI and put it in terms that makes it a little bit more digestible. Brace yourselves for a journey into the future where machines create alongside us. So whether you're a tech guru, an education enthusiast, or just someone who loves a good aha moment, you're in the right place. I'm going to go ahead and bring Dan up. And we've got Heather back as well. Yes, I'm back. I'm back. Yay. I was wondering. I was like, man, I, I, I hope she I the... forgot that we had to switch rooms. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we're, switch, we're switching rooms. We got, we, we're got queuing one up as one's still ending. So it's back-to-back -back fun, back-to-back -back sessions. But first, now um, I know. <laughs> Dan is the author of the AI Classroom, The Ultimate Guide to Artificial Intelligence and Education. Um, he was awarded uh, the Tech Champion Award of the Digital Industry Dynamite Awards 2022 and featured in the latest EdTech 50. He, he was also just on PBS, which I'm going to ask you about in a second, Dan. Um, he's a former member of a secondary school senior leadership team. Um, he is an MA from Durham University and PGCE from UCL and a postgraduate diploma in design thinking and innovation from MIT. So, Dan, tell us a little bit about this PBS special. Yeah. Um... Yeah, it was pretty crazy. So, I was I was over in in Florida over in the summer, so in August, and as, as somebody from the northeast of England, um, Florida weather in August, very very interesting, especially with my <laughs> my ginger complexion and, and Irish heritage. Um, yeah, yeah, that's another story. But uh, yeah, yeah. So I was I traveled around, did some did some PD for some universities and and. Then went up to Tallahassee, amazing place, absolutely beautiful place, and uh, was asked to record a, a one-hour special for PBS uh, in Florida, um, which is kind of like my main keynote. So when I go into schools, colleges, universities, um, my kind of one-hour core keynote, it, it was that really. So we got some, the TV producers got got a bit of an audience in and yeah we just we we went through it we we talked about ai and uh did some q a bit of pres presenting and then they i think they've gone away worked some magic with their editor and and put it out as a as a special so i think it, it first aired last week and then it, mm. it was just repeated last night i think so if you're in the florida area i think you can watch it if not i do have a copy of it so I might see if I I might ask them if I can put it on YouTube. Oh, that would be amazing. I'm I'm dying to see it. Uh, I'm I'm blown. So it was one of my greatest pleasures to co-author the book with you, and I'm just blown away by your constant knowledge and dedication to just learning everything about AI there is out there. And you've been jet setting. You've been all over the world presenting, mm -hmm. and I, I've just enjoyed watching your journey. 
yeah, I'm home at the minute, which is amazing. Uh, my, my kids uh, are very thankful about that. Uh, yes, yeah, so, yeah, it's amazing. I suppose a lot of my, people watching this might not realize, but so we co authored the book together uh, with Brad. Heather, you you edited, I edited the, it for you, layout <laughs> and, and all of that kind of thing. Um, and I, we've never met in person. No, so, this is the first time we've ever talked, even. Is it? Is it? Seriously? It is. This is the first time we've ever actually talked. Oh wow! <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, it's yeah, it's it's crazy, isn't it? What what we can do together? But I've still got memories of of all three of our icons being in that Canva document and mm -hmm. and editing away. And uh, no, it was good times. It was it was I say good times. It was only a few months ago. It feels like a long time ago. Oh my gosh! Yeah. And and since so much then, happened. March March thirtieth, like. The advancements and the new tools that have rolled out every day have just been mind boggling. It, it's moving at the speed of light. And what I like to say is, you know, people like to look to us as experts, but really there are no experts in AI. We're just all learning, you know, as as it's coming. Yeah, 100 percent. I think I like. Yeah, I sometimes say to people, like, I'm just I'm probably just a few weeks ahead of you. That's all. That's all it is, and I suppose it's my job and, and our jobs, I guess, to stay to stay that few weeks ahead, to keep helping helping educators and and leaders to to stay stay up to date with this and kind of streamline some of it as well. Because as you'll be aware, there's a lot of noise. Um, there's a lot of tools out there as well, which are kind of which make noise and and don't always deliver. So it's amazing to be with you guys today at Curicon and to um, and to actually champion a tool that is making a huge difference and i know amanda we were really proud to to put in the book as well to put in the ai classroom as a as a case study i know early I've, I've just noticed alien who's in scotland which is not too far from me um in the chat so alien did a case study on curapod and uh, and i know curapod were featured a few times in there so it's amazing to to actually and i know amanda i don't know if you mentioned it but you've just come back from norway haven't you you went to actually visit I the home of the yeah I, I mentioned yesterday i got to go to norway and hang out with the team wonderful book oh, um, i, I didn't know what Jesus. happened there. i thought you disappeared under the table exactly. <laughs> <laughs> she's done Bye. <laughs> it's such um, a bad experience in Norway. She's hiding under the table now. <laughs> no, it was, it was amazing. Um, I I couldn't be uh, happier to be part of the CurePod team. They're just an amazing, positive group of people, and they're infectious with their energy. They, I, I call it the Think Orange Orange Energy. And if you've seen them on social media, they're jumping up in their orange. They're just celebrating and. Um, a lot of what you don't see are the developers on the back end. You guys haven't got to meet Eskild, who's amazing. There's Sophie, who's a developer. Um, Frick is is a little a little less on the camera. You see Eric and or Eric and Jens a lot, but the whole team is just phenomenal. Lexi just joined us. She's from California, but she's living in Oslo. So we're we're grown to a team of eight and um, kicking butt, taking names, and you know trying to change education for the better. That's cool. Yeah, I got to meet uh, Eric and oh, sorry, I'm really bad with names. Uh, there was another member of the team, uh, Ibet, earlier this year. Um, yes, oh, we, yes. We, yeah. yeah, we had a few a few drinks in the bar next to Bet, which was which was really nice to catch up with those guys. And um, and I think a couple of days ago, I got to have a, a conference call with with Frick as well, where he was where I got some exclusive behind the scenes look at some of the new features coming in the next the next few months so yeah it's oh, the generators amazing. the generators yeah oh i didn't i didn't i didn't know if i was allowed to say it but uh yeah i'm just, just gonna say the word and let people imagine what that might be mm. but yeah there's some really cool tools coming down the pipeline and a lot of you if you if you're an ambassador or if you've been interested in the ambassador program up until recently when i took it over you probably met with ellen who's phenomenal she's going to be she's joining so me and Lexi at GAETC. So if you're in Atlanta, Georgia, we hope to connect with you. We're going to have a social, wear orange to it, and you get free cocktails. So. Fantastic. I, I do have my orange t-shirt. In fact, it's over my, where is it? There we go. Can you see there, it? There, I see it. Over <laughs> I see it. Um, I see it. Just, I'm not, I just don't, because I've got red hair, I just, it doesn't match. It doesn't what? go with my what? vibe. It's it's like it works so yeah, well. Come on, you you could like pull anything off. Come on, Amanda. Like, I just can't. Uh, I just can't do it. Um, 
Yeah, it's so great to see so many amazing people in the chat. I know we've got Alien who I've said. We will uh, be at TCEA. We will be at GAETC, FETC, TCEA, ISTE, and McCall. Those are the ones we've got nice. locked out. And I think maybe IdeaCon. I've got to double check I hope that. so, because I'm presenting at them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Dan, we're 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 like totally. I, I, it's okay. I'm happy to. I'm I'm, I'm doing a talk weekend. tomorrow as well. But it's, there might be too much of me. Let's. I'm I'm happy just to chat. <laughs> are um, you kidding me? There's never too much of doing things out there. <laughs> you are always a blessing to have and to listen oh, to. Thank you. I learn something every time. And it's amazing to be with this lineup. I see Ra Rachel Dean Poth on the in the chat as well. She's going to be speaking later, isn't she? So and is? Matt as well. Matt later on is yeah, it's a cool lineup. Uh, I think that's probably testament to to Curapod and to and to and to you as well, Amanda, as well that, that you can pull together a community of, of of amazing thought leaders and people who are who are wanting to innovate in education. So thanks for having me. Oh, and we're gonna pop down now and let you have the show. Uh, Rochelle, can't wait to see you at most of those later. Um, Dan, are you ready? I'm gonna I'm gonna cue you yeah, up. Go for it. Oop. All right. Take it away. Fantastic. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Um, if you are wondering what is that accent, um, I it's I think it, oh, well, I'm from the northeast of England, so it's called a Geordie accent. I'm a from a place called Newcastle. If you've not heard of it, uh, if you're closer to home, then you you you'll recognise the accent. Um, it's, yeah, it's fantastic to be with you. It's it's twenty to eleven at night here, um, so it's been great to to have this to finish off my day. And what I'm going to do is I think. I mean, what I will do is just in the next 19 minutes, because that's all I've got, I'll I'll do a bit of an intro um, to kind of some of my thoughts around how disruptive this technology will be. And then tomorrow in my session, I think tomorrow is dedicated to, to leadership. But um, if you don't have leadership in your title, don't let that put you off because it's going to be about um, leadership at all levels. And if, you, and if you're a classroom teacher, if you, what, whoever you are in a, in a school, college, or university, you 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 will be leading in some way. So, uh, come join us tomorrow, and I will be doing kind of the second half of what I'm going to be talking about today. And tomorrow, we'll be getting more into kind of the strategic side of it. How do we how do we fully integrate it as a as leaders, and and how do we prepare for the future of of what's coming? Because I think a lot of people, when they look at this technology, think, "Well, AI is here now, amazing. Let's let's get on with it." But it, we're we're on we're on day one. Um, if you've ever heard me speak, you like you, you'll know I like to say day one a lot. Uh, at some point, we're going to get into day two, but we're we're on day one of this, and and it's going to keep coming. It's going to keep coming thick and fast. Um, a lot of what I'm going to talk about today is in the the AI classroom, uh, which which we've just been talking to about Chandler. Yes, I am. Um, and in the next book, so I'm I'm just I'm just about halfway through writing the next book, which is called Leadership in the Future, um, a new educational strategy in the era of artificial intelligence. Um, so you'd be kind of getting some of the insights of that more tomorrow than than today. But if you want to go explore more of this, then it will be in this book. I always start with this quote, and and I know many of you will have heard it before, but I just I just kind of think it sums up where we're at at the moment. It's by McKinsey and Company. McKinsey Company said four years ago, they said we'll experience more technological progress in the coming decade than we did in the preceding 100 years put together. That's a bold quote. That's a really bold quote. If we if we were to brainstorm all of the technological changes and advances that we've had over the last century, we, we'd be here all night. It's it's been the most progressive technologically. 100 years that that we've ever been through as a species to say we're going to get that and more in the next 10 years and let's say even six years because this quote's four years old is bold and you'd be forgiven for thinking this is hyperbole and i think i did to a certain extent even though i've been using this quote for a while but and it wasn't until i started using generative ai and and tools like curapod that I I suddenly realized just how we're going to get there because and I don't know about you but when I first started using it my mind just kind of started going now what if this was in my phone what if this was in this device what if this was in 
um, deeply embedded into how we learn, into our information systems, into, into so much of my mind just kind of just started sparking with with actually if this is embedded in a, in kind of the real world around us and and progresses at the speed that we think it's going to progress at, then then we certainly are in for a future that we we probably can't even imagine yet. More on that tomorrow. Um, what I want to do now is I just want to just to delve more into this new era that we've entered. I would like you to just watch this video, and this video features Morgan Freeman talking about this new era. What is your perception of reality? Is it the ability to capture, process, and make sense of the information our senses receive? If you can see, hear, taste, or smell something, does that make it real? Or is it simply the ability to feel? I would like to welcome you to the era of synthetic reality. Now, what do you see? So Morgan Freeman there says, I'd like to welcome you to the era of synthetic reality. Now, what do you see? What do you think he means by that? What do you think he means by that? Put it in the chat if you're writing in the chat. Just have a think about it. What does he mean by, I'd like to welcome you to the era of synthetic reality. Now, what do you see? Chandler, no flies on you, my friend. Uh, Lisa, yes. What is your perception? I am not Morgan Freeman, and what you see is not real. Well, at least in contemporary terms, it is not. What if I were to tell you that I am not even a human being? Would you believe me? Yeah, um... Uh, most people tend to get that, which which is still reassuring, which is quite reassuring to me um, that we do. Uh, but I mean, like I say, we're on day one of this, and we've got this technology. I mean, the concept of deep fakes has been around for for a while, hasn't it? But the technology now that we have with generative AI to be able to create things like that really easily. And when I do workshops with teachers, I show them uh, literally within ten minutes how they can create something like that. AI generated voice, image, animation in about 10 minutes to create really highly engaging learning resources for their students. And it's just amazing that we've got that. Now, obviously, we've got concerns on one side there. We've got amazing potential, amazing potential that we need to tap into uh, within the education system and how we design our resources. But also some concerns. So there's always a balance here. There's always a balance about how we look at these things. And Again, tomorrow, I know I keep doing lots of teasers for tomorrow, but tomorrow we're going to kind of get into that that kind of progress side of things and and what, what how we might need to view it. What is all what does this mean? What does this mean? So we we can we can generate amazing lessons with QRPod. We can do some amazing things with generative AI. What does it all mean? And I put this in the book. I said, in the AI era, we will create simply using words simply using words now again when i when i say that it normally splits a room so i bet some of you are thinking this is amazing <laughs> like the the what i can do now that i couldn't do just a few months ago so if you're like me you don't have a creative bone in your body I can I can generate or or I can help generate um, with AI some amazing images without having to have graphic design graphics skills. I can create music um, without having to know how to produce music, even play a sing single chord on the guitar. I can create I can create simply using words. Now, obviously, there's another side to that. There's the whole thing of, well, what about all the students that we've just said goodbye to last year who've gone out with technical skills? What about all the businesses out there that are live and die on, on these technical skills? And so on. Well, I think there is good news there. I think there is good news. And it comes down to the collaboration side of things. It's about collaborating with AI. There's a lot of evidence coming out at the minute to say that collaboration with AI 
produces far more greater results than just AI on its own and just humans on their own. Um, and just to give you a bit of insight into that, a lot of people like to to talk about the story of Go. So if you've heard of the game Go, um, Google created an AI to play Go about 10 years ago now, and they did it with, with DeepMind. Um, and what they, what they did was they developed this AI. It's a really complex game, more complex than chess to play. They, they got the AI to beat the Go champion. And a lot of people use that story as a way to say, look, AI is even better than the Go champion. And, and 15 years before that, uh, Deep Blue by IBM beat the Gary Kasparov, the chess champion. So to say how powerful AI is. However, one of the things that we don't normally hear about is that what the what the developers at Google found just a few years later after their AI beat the Go champion was that they found a way to beat the AI. And the way to beat the AI was a Go player, a human, with the AI. So it's that collaboration which is vital. And that's our future. It's our future. Collaboration with AI is our future. And because of that, um, I, I like to kind of address this elephant in the room because when when a lot of us first started exploring artificial intelligence at the end of last year and, and kind of those first educators started to, to voice their opinions about it, there was a, there was a, there was a deep concern, and, and you still hear it a lot today, there's a deep concern that AI could destroy literacy skills. And on the surface, I totally get that because if you think um, – Give a, give a student some work. They go away. They type into ChatGPT, for example, do my work for me. They get the results. They hand it in. They haven't really learned much. They haven't engaged with the content, and they haven't um, practiced their literacy skills. However, I think it's a red heron. And anybody who's, who's used AI will know that your literacy skills have got to be really good to get anything of of really high value out of generative AI. I think they're both connected. I think AI, um, I think, sorry, I think literacy is an AI skill. Right, let's just delve into to what where AI is going. And I just want to throw a couple of examples at you. Uh, a pilot study recently by the European Society for Emergency Medicine uh, here in Europe found that ChatGPT performs as well as doctors for suggesting likely diagnosis in emergency medicine departments. Okay. Now that's crazy. Now, whatever you do, please, if you feel ill, go see a doctor. Do not just rely on ChatGPT, please. But this gives us insight into where this is going. And Google are, are, are creating a, a generative AI uh, model just for um, general practitioners, uh, uh, GPs. What um, I'm not sure what you call them in, in America, if you're in America. Um you, you, you kind of general doctors. Um, so that this is the, the future of of medicine. The future of 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 health sciences is down this route. Um, you know what I'm going to do because of time. I've got seven minutes left. I'm going to save this example for tomorrow. But it is phenomenal. If you've ever heard me speak before and heard me give talk about this example, you will know just how mind blowing this is. Tomorrow, come join me tomorrow. I'll also show that one. Right. Um, Two-thirds of occupations could be partially automated by artificial intelligence. Goldman Sachs report from March. Sounds amazing. Two-thirds of us are going to get to collaborate with AI in our work. However, let's say me and you both work for the same company. AI does 50% of my job, does 50% of your job. Is the company going to need both of us anymore? This led BBC News to say uh, AI could replace the equivalent of 300 million jobs. Uh, some I've, I've read a recent report about a month ago that said that this could be actually likely over a billion worldwide. It's already happening. IKEA have decided to, to get rid of uh, 3,000 call center workers because they found that AI not only could do the job, but was getting better customer satisfaction reports than the humans. No brainer for a company. IKEA frame themselves as an ethical company, so they are uh, they're reskilling those workers to be virtual interior designers. Probably not um, 
that forward thinking if you ask me ai will be to do that easily uh but it's 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 happening more harshly in other areas dropbox uh, announced they were laying off 500 people p- pivoting to ai uh this ceo from uh, cnn back in july re- replaced 90 percent of their support staff with an ai chatbot this is nothing new though and the same goldman sachs report um cited uh, this economist who found that 60% of today's workers are employed in occupations that didn't exist in 1940. Okay. 60%. Now, obviously 1940 is a long time ago. It's a long time ago, isn't it? Um, but massive changes happened in the job market. We, we, we saw something very similar happen in the early 2000s with the, 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 all of the new internet companies popping up and we're about to see in fact we're not just about to see it's already happening ChatGPT has been out less than 12 months we're coming up to the anniversary at the end of november and it's already changing the the, the jobs market around the world and generative ai changing the jobs market around the world it's going to happen faster though two reasons it's going to happen faster first reason uh, a lot of companies have learned the lesson from 20 years ago and are jumping on to generative AI um, because look at look at those who, who did really well out of internet companies, Amazon, Google, for example, now trillion-dollar companies. So every company in the world is jumping on to AI. Um, secondly, this is the first time in history that we've had a technology that learns for itself. It doesn't necessarily need a human to help advance it. It can learn for itself. So we're about to see this growth and this progress um, at breakneck speed. It's going to get faster. It's going to get a lot faster. My worry, I'm getting to the point of this because I'm just throwing lots of things at, at you at the minute, I know. But my point my point to this is I am worried about the digital divide. Normally, I use this slide to talk about the digital divide with our students, and I talk about COVID and how, it, how we got a spotlight into the digital divide during COVID. However, I want to use this slide to talk about the the upcoming digital divide and it's already here really but the upcoming digital divide of our staff of our colleagues now i've worked in edtech and i've tried and i've worked in change management within education for a number of years and there's always there's always those members of staff in, in, and i bet a lot of you on this on this uh, webinar have as well you always get that kind of and it tends to be the majority really of staff who are really slow to try and convert to technology and many of them don't actually even start using the technology anyway, because at the end of the day, they they can normally do everything they need to do in the old analog way because of the way our schools are set up. They're very traditional, especially here in England, um, and the education system is set up. So at the end of the day, there's not a real urgent incentive apart from the kind of, look what it can do for you. It can do some amazing things and and so on. So my worry is that that gap of the digital divide is going to grow and it's a worry because of this this was some new um data that was just uh published by mit and harvard they worked with boston consultancy group now this isn't about educators this is a a consulting group however i'm using it because it it kind of backs up a lot of the anecdotal evidence that we're seeing at the moment (laughs) <laughs> Sorry, and they found that working with a observing a group of consultants using AI and observing a group that weren't using AI, about seven hundred in each group, they found that those who were using AI finished about twelve percent more tasks on average, completed tasks twenty five percent more quickly, and produced forty percent higher results than those without. Those numbers are going to get bigger and bigger and bigger as the technology gets better. We're going to see that divide within our colleagues, within the skill set of our colleagues. And we've got a big job to do. We've got a big job to do. And I think that's where tools like Curapod come in and help help fill that gap. They really do. Hi, Heather. I've got one minute left. Hello. Yes, you have, do. Let me have this one minute. Um, I'm just gonna I'm gonna end it there actually, because tomorrow we're gonna go into kind of the strategic of how approach of how we do it, why we need to do it. Uh, let me allow me 30, 20 seconds to plug tomorrow. You are fine. Tomorrow, uh, myself and and Matt Miller are gonna are gonna join, jump on a webinar together. It's the first time me and Matt have have worked together officially. Um, and and I know Matt's gonna be talking later on. Um, 
uh, this evening. Uh, we're going to get together. We're going to talk about this whole thing of cheating with AI. M myself and Matt, we we are fortunate to travel the world, talk to teachers regularly. It's a big question at the minute. What is using AI cheating? Is getting our students to use it cheating? What is plagiarism in this new AI era? So we're going to explore that. So please do scan the QR code. Come and join us tomorrow. It's before um curacon starts so it's it's not clashing at all you can what you can get both in it's six o'clock english time one o'clock eastern time ten o'clock pacific time uh if you don't get that code check out our social media and you will find it there um check out the book if you haven't got it already a few people talking about how you've got the book that's amazing to hear um let me skip through uh everything else is is on there but I will. I've just finished on time. Look, it's you did. It's eleven, eleven o'clock. I, I, I think yeah. it's quite. It's a bit earlier for you. But uh, there we go. I've never had to talk so fast in my whole entire life. Normally, when I do a keynote, it, it can go on for like two, two or three hours. Uh, <laughs> oh yes, I, I know. <laughs> but well, yeah, you did I'll great. Stop. And you I'll get to come back there. tomorrow, anyways. I do. I can't wait. Um, I'm going to be, be really wonderful. pumped up. I'm going to be really pumped up from having uh, spent a bit of time with Matt earlier in the day. Um, uh, yeah. And, let me and I would like to screen. announce our winner from this round. Our winner yes. for this one is Latoya. So make sure you email Amanda at Kirapod.com and she will get you all your information. Also, so Latoya's one is at the swag bag, Heather. Yes. Uh, let let's put in the swag bag a copy of the AI classroom as well. We so can definitely do that. Let's do that, Latoya. That that's making its way to you. Thank you very much. As I said, it's eleven o'clock. I'm going to go to bed now, Heather. Is that okay? Okay, you go to bed, and I'm on to our next one. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Thank Bye -bye. you very much. Take care. See you tomorrow. Bye. See you tomorrow. The future's awesome. Where I and DJ, they both belong. Join the conference, it's gonna be lit. You're a pop fan, you don't wanna miss it. In this digital age, we got them online. No need to travel, no waiting in line. From the comfort of home, our passion tastes like. Bring me the bodies, but our heart bars are right. Can't attend live, don't let it dismay. Plays on the way, just a click, no delay. Jury gun, the future's our song.